Hey everybody, Jay Widener, Reality Check. Thanks for watching, hit share, subscribe and all that. Um, <clears throat> about uh, seven months ago, I was reading a, a book by, uh, by Nick Bostrom, who's a physicist. And he said that, you know, there was a really good chance that we were living in a simulation. And he said something really interesting. And it really pushed me onto the road I'm on now and where I'm going tonight. He said that if we are living in a simulation, then there is one way you can discover that you are in a simulation. And that would be that the programmer would probably spend more time on the present and the future than he would on the past. So if you go into the past and you start finding inconsistencies, that could be proof that you're going, we're living in a simulation. And so I, right after that, I bought Howdy Mikowski's book and that blew my mind. And then I started going down the rabbit hole and looking for these inconsistencies. And then I found this guy. I found Campbell of the Autodidactic Channel. I highly recommend it. You will spend hundreds of hours on there. Hey, Campbell, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jay. Um, yeah, really appreciate you having me. Um, like I said, big fan of your work as well, so thank you. Yeah, and um, so your kind of Ballywick is your, you take ancient archives, photos, maps, and kind of drill down into it, and you start asking questions that, you know, when you ask it, it seems so obvious that that would be the first question you would ask, but nobody ever seems to ask those questions and really begin to wonder about reality. And, and I think where my, where my, uh, the camel's back broke was when I was watching one of your videos, because I'm really into cathedrals and architecture and that kind of thing. And you had a photo from California that was taken, I think, in 1870 or something of a dilapidated cathedral. And I'm like, wait a minute, it takes 200 years to build a cathedral. It takes 200 years for it to fall apart unless something bombed it. And, you know, there had to be a use, a period of use. The Spanish didn't build big cathedrals, not in America. They built, they built their missions. So that's when I started wondering maybe there's something going on that I cannot figure out. Anyway, so I thought we'd do tonight is kind of take your, take some of your stuff and introduce it to my audience so that they can see what I'm talking, what you're talking about and why I find this so intriguing. So I'll let you take it over. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah. And it's like you say that the things that, you know, I didn't see this either. I mean, I guess we all do, we do, but we're programmed not to, you know, not, not to question things and not to really, uh, you know, question the narrative. And so, yeah, um, basically I was watching a channel called New Earth Channel uh, with Sylvie and she was, um, there was a, a series called When the Survivors Wake Up. Um, it's been completely obliterated now. Um, she ended up having to get lawyers and, and go to court against YouTube because they, they, they wanted it off so badly. Um, and this was a couple of years ago then. Um, so through her work, I got onto something called Star Forts, which I'll show you a little bit of later, but mainly this thing that's called the mud flood. Uh, and it's basically, and we just started looking at buildings and looking at history and then reading the story. And then we'd look at, at the physical evidence. And as soon as you start doing this, you find there is a massive, massive gap, a big disjunct. Uh, things just don't match up. So they I don't. do have uh, some photos to have a quick look at. So um, can you see that? Oh, don't, I have to share screen, don't I? Hang on. No. Uh, share screen. Okay, can you see that? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is this is actually from Perth. This is from my home city, mm -hmm. uh, the Atlas Building. Yep. And this, you know, most people would just think, yep, that's just a building. Now, when I look at this, what I see is this line up here. Can you see this? How this goes up on an angle? Yep. Yep. And you see these windows; they go straight until we get mm -hmm. to here. Then they've had to lift them up a bit. Hey. Then they've had to lift them up again. Then they've had to lift them up again. Now, 
this building, you know, it's only three stories, but this is a big, heavy building. Now, when you build buildings, you build them on a flat foundation. I've, you I've you, you my flatten own the ground, yeah. yep, and you put a big foundation in. Right. If you've ever seen a, um, a skyscraper or a big building being built, they spend, you know, half the time putting the foundation in. That's right. Um, so this building, you know, look at this. Why would it be on that angle? So this That's is a kind of... No, can't figure that one out. <laughs> and these guys, these buildings, they will be in a city near you. Um, you can go in. That's also why this is such a fascinating subject is anyone can walk out their door pretty much. Yep. Go to their local city, local town, and they will see this kind of stuff. I grew uh, just up... One thing, where I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, the entire down, they've torn it all down now, but the entire downtown when I was young were these incredible in ornate buildings and, and they just put the wrecking ball to them. Yeah. And that's the other thing uh, with the narrative they give us because they've had to compress all this history into a short time and it doesn't, it doesn't fit. And so we get stories of these big buildings, um, you know, and they tell us, oh, they were built in two years stood for 20 years and then they knocked it over. And these buildings, when, when you think about the materials and the costs and everything that went into creating them, it, it just doesn't make sense because these are all supposed to be in cities that are just starting out as well. I also point out that that person walking is a lot smaller than the doors. Yeah. <laughs> so these people, you can see the head there. Yep. So she's about half the size of this door. Those doors so that's are about another 10 thing. To 11 feet. Yeah. yeah, that's another thing you'll notice is the size of these stories. Yep. So that's a story to there. Now that's a whole other story up to here. That's exactly right. All those they're, buildings they're, are like 14 foot stories. Mm, exactly. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. This this topic just expands so quickly. So um, I won't go there at the moment. I'll try and keep on. Yep. on this mud flood. So, so the mud flood theory, here's another um, good shot. You can see this hill is running downhill, oh, yep. of course, <laughs> running down here, but you can see this level here. Yep. You can see that, that this, this level in here, that's actually flat and they've dug it out and they've even actually put a stairway going across the gap so you can get to the front door. That's now what's happened here is this building, and you can see this building goes back here. This is a big building. Yeah. Um, again, you would need to build this on a flat foundation. So this, in my opinion, has been flooded. At some point, there has been an inundation of mud. Uh, and what it's done is it's, it's buried this building on an angle. And you can see there's a, there's a bottom story here with a door. But because it's, as, a, as of this point, it's all underground. So they've just sort of cleared this so they can access this bit of the bottom area here. So and it, as you'll notice, uh, this dirt, uh, sorry, this road is dirt. It's not even a paved road. Right. So if you were going to build a building like this, would the first thing, you know, you would do not be to build a solid road so you can actually get your materials in and out of there? Very important. Look at this. Um, so this is the, stuff, the kind of stuff we see everywhere. And again, just look at the ornateness of this. Beautiful. You know, these, these arches, you know, even underneath here, look at the work they go to. Incredible. And this is stuff we don't see anymore. They, they, you, can they, they, see can't. you can also see it's aged in that corner, the front corner. You can see there's been a lot of aging going on too. Exactly. So, you know, it's not a new building. You know, it's made of large rocks as well. You know, large, uh, looks like large stones. And this is another thing, um, which I'll, I'll mention later. But again, this lady is fairly small compared to the size of this building. Yep. Isn't she, really? She is. Uh, here's another one. Now, this is, um, you know, a more capital sort of what we call capital buildings, which, and these always have the arches and the columns. And <laughs> look, look at these columns. Look how tall they are. And can you see these? These are windows. Can you see that? And there's one right here. Now that window is at ground level. Why would you build a window at ground level? As soon as it rains, what's gonna happen? Yep. You're gonna get flooded. And you'll see in many cities, these windows, and they actually build uh, like little walls, like little sort of sill things around them to keep the water out. And they have drains in them. And 
lots of other things. But this building here, this this here is is a level, and they've had to build steps up to get to it. And what's below here, there's there's at least another level under the ground. And so this is what I call uh, stairs up, windows down. It's basically how you can yeah, that's how you can identify a mud flood building is because unless the flood has you know gone to exactly the right level. They always have to um, you know, build the stairs up to get to the higher level and the higher level becomes the ground floor then. And then whatever's underneath, they just call the basement. Right. Uh, and this is, of course, you know, we get a lot of comments. You know, I've got a basement, I've got a basement. Um, we're not talking about houses. We're not talking about wooden structures. We are talking about massive, big, red brick structures that are in the cities that have sunken ground, uh, sunken levels. And one thing else I'll mention is the way this looks, see how this looks like it's all sandstone? Yeah. Um, and here brick, and it's actually not. All these buildings, what we found is when, when you see, uh, there's lots of photos and you'll see this facade uh, where it's been broken off. Every one of these buildings that we can find, like, and every single one, is made of red brick. Every one. And what they do is they come along and they make them look different by putting different facades on them. Right. So when, when you go to like Spain, you know, they're all that sort of um, earthy colour. Um, and, you know, obviously Asian, they change roof lines. And, and in Australia, they put verandas on them all. Uh, but they're all, they're all essentially the same bones, but they change the look of them. So yeah. this next picture, we'll start to get into, oh, this, this one's in England. And again, look at this house. This is literally half sunk in the ground. Um, and you can see this is the lower level. They've had to build stairs up to the to this second level. And there's a level under the ground here. And you just see it everywhere. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Okay, this picture here, this is an excavation site and you can see these are columns. Now what's very interesting is these columns are standing straight up and look how far they've been buried. And what have they been buried by? Just looks like dirt and mud and rubble. Another thing to have a look at is in the background, look at this shape. So this, you can see this is quite a way under the ground. Uh, now with history, and archaeology, uh, the question that, that, you know, we've never asked is why is everything under the ground? Does that even make sense that everything's buried? Not really. Because we get told, if you go and ask, oh, why does that mountain or that rock formation look like that? You'll get told by a geologist, oh, that's because of weathering and time. Yeah. You know, the, the wind, the rain wears it down over time. It wears it down. But, but when it comes to um, archaeology, it's been built up. The other things happened. And of course, some people might say, oh, well, you know, the mountains wore down and all, that all ran down the hill and that, that buried everything. But uh, this is not rock. This is mud. This is dirt. And also, what kind of time frame are we looking here? Because we're talking metres and metres. Um, and I mean, so how, how long does it take for that amount of, of land to build up naturally because this is the story they're trying to say they sure. try and say oh no this is just natural build up of land but really this much because when you look into how land builds up what they what they tell you is uh the land builds up because of people leaving their rubbish around because of vegetation rotting down and from sand blowing in from other places and water yeah and yeah and water moving things around Right. But, uh, you know, we don't see that. And when we see ruins, we don't see, you know, one side or the walls covered more than, than, the, than the inside. Like it doesn't look like wind's blown up things up against the wall. They get covered completely. Uh, just like this, another column. And as you can see, it's just, this is what we're told is, you know, Greco-Roman. Yep. Uh, this sort of look. Now you'll see this, these columns. I mean, you're, you're in the US, Jay. Yeah. Uh, Capital building has these, right? Probably right. every capital building for every state has these. Yep, almost. Why, why was everyone building in the same style? 
if, if America was a new founded country, um, especially because you know it was founded on people escaping, you know, Europe for the for, for their belief systems, why would they then go and copy all the architecture from Europe? And and how? How could how how you know? Well, they um, thought that they were uh, the new Rome. America did. And, yeah. Well. And they are really they are the new Rome, <clears throat> but. Um, uh buried this deep i i can't explain that no mm. and these things are everywhere now now we'll get into some good pictures uh to show you what because when we when we and i say we there's you know a community of us uh of people who are researching this topic um and we've it's been going sort of two or three years really we've sort of been building up and a lot of this stuff we just started um, you know, assuming, like I showed you those pictures, oh, it looks like there's a full story behind, uh, below that building. But it took us a while of hunting, but we found all the photos. We, we, this, is not a, this is not a theory anymore. Uh, this picture here, oh, that's just another buried, this is a buried building that they found. And as you can see, see these, these, these are windows. This is the remnants of a window frame. Can you see that? Yep. And can you see what's in this one? Uh, that's, that's brick. Yeah. So someone has bricked this up from the inside. And this got, was underground. This was all buried. This was a lower story. The ground level's up here somewhere. And as you can see, all red brick. Whenever you see it without the facade, it's always red brick. Uh, so I think it must be this photo. Okay, so here we go. This I believe this is from Russia, and Russia has a lot of a lot of these pictures because uh, they've done quite a bit of excavating in Russia, and this is what they find. So this this was the street level here, or, or is the street level, and they've gone and done a bit of excavation, and look what they've found underneath. This is the original front door. And if this is the one they've built on top into the second story. These windows, you can see they're exactly on top of this. Now this, see, can you see how that's been cut in half? Yeah. This is those windows that we see sitting on the pavement. And this is the rest of the window that was underground. Can you see that? I uh, let me I'll bring it up a bit better for you. There you go. So, so yeah, this is, this, so this is the ground level. This is what you would see walking down the street, one of those ground level windows, but it's actually a full window that goes straight underground. And you can see this has still got the window frame in it and the glass. Crazy. And this has still got, this has still got the front door on it. And this is complete, this is a hot, and as you can see again, see when, when the facade goes, it's all red brick. This is all red brick. So the owners or the people that lived there, they must have known because there was. Yeah, they must have. Yeah, they must have. Yeah, I mean, unless somehow the, the bottom, this was all sealed off. But I mean, with these windows, you would think they would have to know. So um, I'm not sure what's on the inside here. It maybe it was just boarded up and it was just called a basement. Yep. You know? <clears throat> yeah, they just sealed it up. <clears throat> and Probably had rats in and, it. <laughs> God, well, this is the thing. I mean, how much moisture would be getting in there? You know, it wouldn't be an, a, a very nice place to be. No, it wouldn't. Uh, now, this one, this is a church. And as you can see, this is what it used to look like. This is the ground level. Okay. Uh, they did a bit of excavating and look what they found. A whole other level underground. Okay, so this bit here is this. You can see the two windows. So this is the ground level and it was literally just at the top of the original door it was covered up. But here we've got the original door, we've got arches, like a whole nother story underneath. Buried in, just buried. Frigging unbelievable. So this, this stuff is, uh, yeah, there, there's, like I said, uh, go and have a look in your local city guys. And, and you will see this stuff. What, what you need to look for is the big old world looking buildings. Um, you know, any, anything that's kind of like, like a government building, a post office, a library, a school, yep. a jail, <laughs> a mental asylum, 
they, yeah. that, they, that all these buildings, they, they grab and they tag as government buildings. And that's so we can't poke around, I think. This picture, this is uh, the temple in Salt Lake City. This is the ground level here. And that, that's a window. Okay. The Mormon temple? Now, uh, yeah, yep, yeah, the Mormon temple. Yep, yeah, the, the big temple. They did some excavating. Uh, I think it was to do with trying to locate the original um, cornerstone or something. Oh, right. But they did some digging around, and this is one photo, and this is basically what they got. This is the ground level. Okay, right. stairs going up, and look at this. So this is 14 feet <clears throat> down. That's clearly you can shocking. See. Yeah, so this is the Mormon temple. This is Salt Lake City. Uh, Salt Lake City's got a few of these buildings, lots of questions. Uh, okay, these are serious. Yeah, and this is a guy sitting down here. So you can see kind of the scale, the size, but, but clearly you can see this doorway. And it's directly under the new doorway. So that's all they do is so they minute. run things down. Just speculating, are you saying that when... Uh, when they, uh, they arrived there in the 1860s or whatever, that they found this thing already built or what? Yep. And the mud yep. was all the way up to here and then they- And the, and the mud was already stairs. covered. So, yeah, so they, they found them- Stairs and- Yep. Basically what it looks like is they found them flooded. Um, some buildings they've, you know, sort of taken a bit of dirt away. Um, and then basically just so they could access them and, and they've put like the stairs in here um, going up so they can get to the front door and, and they've basically just taken them because the word founded, Jay, I mean, think of the whole word founded. It's actually the word found. Yeah, isn't it is. It? But they just find it and then they say, oh, it's founded. And, and the word um, Freemason, free masonry, free buildings. Um, so, so there's all these, yeah, like a lot of things starts to tie in, but, but yeah, this is a very pretty telling picture. And like and I said, this like is, the window to the uh, left of the door is half covered. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, they, they, they've put this dotted line in to show you the, um, the ground level, but yeah, this is the top of it. And this is the bottom underground. And, and another thing you notice with these old buildings is they're very, very symmetrical. So when you see uh, windows, they're always exactly on top of each other. And, and that's what we find, they, they go straight that, into the ground. That's compelling evidence, that's for sure. Mm, it is, it is. It's yep. a bit hard to sort of argue that one, isn't it? It is. Because it, somebody will say, oh, that's just the foundation, but why would they do that? Why would it have doors and windows in it? Why would you build a window underground? Exactly. Uh, this is Russia again, I believe. And as you can see, same thing, street level. And what do we have under the ground? Window, 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 door, windows, all the way along, windows. And, and this is, down the bottom here, this is actually just dirt. This isn't a foundation. You can see it's, it's sort of come along. And you can see in here, more windows. So this, this may be a full story and then another story. So this may be two stories underground. And who knows, there may be a third. We, we don't know. Because the thing, like I said, the thing about these buildings is uh, most of them were just designated government buildings. So, so the public could not get in there and, and, and say, oh, I'm going downstairs. You know, you can't do it. So, so no one had access or, to these things. And if they did, it would just be like a bricked up room or, and, oh, that's just a cellar. So, but yeah, this is what they find when they start digging down. It, it's a little hard to, to say that that's not another story, isn't it? Um, I say there's a hundred percent chance that that is connected to the top. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one structure. And you'll see again, it's our red brick. You know, you can see where the facades come off. It's red, <clears throat> but up here they, they make it so they don't look like red brick. And so you can see three buildings in a row, they all look different and they'll say, oh, that's from this period, oh, that's from this period, that's from this period. But you, you take the facade off and they're all exactly the same underneath. So it's all, yeah, the facade, I call it a face ad, and they change the face, add a new face to it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, here's another one. And as you can see, this one, <laughs> one story, two story, three story, and we're still going, still going down. This is the road. The road is literally built on the top of a building. Okay, windows, windows, look at this. This is way underground, two levels underground, we've got windows. And again, all red brick. And I mean, just, just, just that, look at the amount of red brick and work. I mean, imagine what that building was. And who was it for? Who, who built it? When was it built? And why was it, uh, and how did it get mud, mudded? This is exactly. So we do have theories about that. Um, obviously nothing conclusive yet. Um, but there's uh, things like uh, liquefaction, yeah. uh, where you have, you know, like uh, the ground shaking and, the, and basically the, the ground turns to liquid and things can, can sink. Uh, the main problem I have with that is if when, normally when you get liquefaction, things don't sink straight down. They tend to sort of go sideways. And we don't see that. We we see thing. It looks like the muds come up. Uh, so we have things like you know you have geysers and things in Yellowstone Park where muds continually being pumped out of the ground. It could have been some massive event like that. Um, and then yeah, well then there's other events because because we also get a, another phenomenon uh, which is melted buildings, which are all over the place. But that's another another topic. So there are. Yeah, theories, but we're still working on on what what could possibly have caused this. Of course, um, something that gets thrown in the ring all the time is Noah's flood. Uh, and and did Noah's flood really happen six thousand years ago, or did it happen more like a thousand years ago and cause this? Because as far as we can tell, uh, all of these buildings. You know, it was, it was around the sort of 14, 1500s, because if you look back at that time frame, all the maps start changing, all the information starts changing, you get all these books of these people, you know, going in and, you know, discovering these lands. And of course, it was the age of discovery, they tell us, um, which was really the age of rediscovery. It was really, Actually, as far as, yeah, I as far have, as I can tell, it was, sorry. I have a theory. I was reading um, up on, the history of uh, ships and boats. <clears throat> and I realized that there had been minuscule advancement in ships, the evolution of ships from the year 400 when Rome fell to 1400 when Portugal and Spain began going out. And then I'm looking, I'm looking at the pictures of the ships and I'm looking at the pictures of the ships in Rome I'm going, wait a minute here, a thousand years has gone by and you guys are using the same exact technology? Uh, and then I realized, did Rome just switch to Spain and then decide to take over the entire Atlantic, you know, in, in 400? If you well, get my drift. <laughs> it's interesting that, that you say those dates and that time frame. Uh, very interesting because there is a man called Anatoly Fomenko who yeah, you well. heard, yeah, you've heard of Anatoly, yeah. uh, a Russian mathematician who basically was studying a uh, solar phenomenon like um, uh, solstices, equinoxes and eclipses. Yep. And when we went back in time, none of these, when they were um, noted, they, they didn't match up with the dates that they should have been there. And oh, yeah. we can tell this because today we've got uh, computer programs and you can go back in the past and we'll tell you exactly what the sky should have looked like. Yep. And he found that it didn't match up. So he did uh, some calculations and a bit of work. And what he worked out is that it looks like 1,000 years uh, has been added to our calendar. So when you say no advancement from, from the year 400 to the year 1400, that, may, that thousand years may not have existed. And that's why there was no advancement. Well, then you realize that Constantine started the church in 350. So now we had the mechanism for how this would unfold. And as a person who's studied um, cathedrals, uh, and I realized that the Catholic Church did not pay for any of the cathedrals. They kept copious receipts of everything they did. And so we don't really know who built the cathedral. Some people say the Templars, 
I don't know. But anyway, as I, as I try to think about this, I realize that the records in India and China could still be correct, even if this happened, even if somehow they manipulated the system here in the West to eliminate a thousand years, everything else would still be okay. It's just that our comparison here would be wrong, but not to those events. Those events still happened. They still occurred uh, and everything. And even the events that we attribute to being within the 400 to 1400 year period, like maybe King Arthur or some of that, those could have still occurred. In other words, you have to get, wrap your head around the whole thing and it takes some abstract thinking to do it. But once you do it, and I'm telling you, when I, when I go to my friends who are scholars who think this theory, by the way, is completely nuts, and when I show them the, um, the evolution of ships, they're perplexed. They really are. They're like, wait a minute, what is this? And, I say, so, and they always fall back, well, Rome fell, so the whole world fell. I'm like, come on, man. There were still people making boats and doing things, and, and they would have evolved in a thousand years. That's a long time. But nothing. So it could be that um, Rome and the Phoenicians had already gone to the New World. Is that possible? Uh, definitely. <laughs> and then they built all this stuff, and then some kind of disaster happened. Yeah. 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 We, we, ha we have maps of uh, the US back sort of 1400s um, and uh, there's lots where California is an island, and then there's a few you can find where uh, the USA is literally split down the middle. It's like two two continents. All right, L let me lay this on you. You know about the expanding Earth theory? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep, the plates and everything. Does yeah. that play in any way into this? Could the um, expanding cause not not like really the amount of mud? I, 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 no, it doesn't. I don't think so because. Um, looking at the maps, it looks much more like uh, rise, rise and fall of water levels or, or land levels. You know, things are just going up and down. They're not necessarily moving away from each other. They're just going up and down. Um, so, you know, islands become land masses and then they become islands again and all this kind of stuff. And that's another thing is all across the world, uh, we've got sunken cities, Sunk, like, every, like everywhere. If you look in the Bay, is it the Bay of Bengal off India? Uh, it's full of them um, all around there. So, so, so clearly the water levels were different at some point. Oh, yeah. um, we have sunken continents. We have like Doggerland. Yep. And uh, what's the new one they found? Um, Zealandia. Yeah. Uh, which, which are literally continents that have been sunk. I so, mean, so all, of, all of Indonesia was connected to Australia and New Guinea yep. at one time. It was a giant, giant land. It was probably was Australia. But we think of as yeah, but we think of as Lemuria, and it, so it's now flooded over. I'm sure there's hundreds of cities in that thing sunken. Mm, exactly. When we start looking in the old maps, yeah, the, the land masses, the shapes of the continents and countries just change so much. Uh, different countries, you know, are connected. Heaps of maps show Australia connected to Antarctica and South America as well. Yeah. Um, so, so this is the thing, uh, the, and and when you, when you start to sort of think of it like that, and this will, you know, this, like you say, you, it takes quite a bit of information and and sort of research to to get come around to these conclusions because we have, you know, everything that we know has been given to us through the education system and through society, and, and you you know the deal. If if you step out of line, there's someone there to grab you and say, hey, no you come back here and this starts um in school in, in the first year of school yep. when they tell you oh don't daydream sit up straight look at me oh and by the way if you give me an answer i don't like i'm going to put a big red cross on your work to say that you're wrong yep. um this is where it starts and then if you, if you if you start to think about it and start to look at it every book every book we have access to unless it's someone who's sat, and sat down and handwritten it, every book has to be published. Okay, these publishing companies, they pick and choose. 
So all the information we get, all of it is just such a sliver of what's out there. Um, you know, we really only get told what they want us to know. And so our view of the world can only come from that perspective, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You know, um, people don't realize it, but you have, when you're building a building, especially a complex building, you have to build a model first. Okay. And, and usually the architect is very proud of the model that he built when the building is finished, it's frequently up in the foyer of the building, the model. Um, but you don't find in, in these older buildings, in America anyway, you can't find the model, you can't find the blueprints. Um, <clears throat> in my hometown of Omaha, there's a, a building, which uh, you guys can look up on Google Earth, called uh, Central High School. And they're telling us in history that they built this building in 1859 when the population of Omaha was 5,000 people. And this building is an entire city block, three stories, all Greek colonnades built on a hill. Um, and it, it's just ludicrous when you begin thinking about it. It's, yeah. Um, it just doesn't make sense at all. I just lost my picture, so there we go. Um, yeah, uh, so the population is a big thing. Uh, when you look into, the, like you said, these massive buildings built for these tiny populations. Yeah. And apart from the question of why, the bigger question is how. Yeah. You know, how they get, where, where are they getting all the materials from? Where's all the industry? You know, if you have a piece of iron, you know, a piece of um, formed iron in a building, just to get that piece of iron is a big chain of people, a big chain of work. You know, you've got to know where the raw materials are. You've got to then dig them out. You've got to transport them to a foundry. You've then got to be able to melt it and, and shape it into what you want and then transport it again to the building and then get it installed by people who know what they're doing. And, and before you do all that, you need a civil architect. You need someone who can check, oh, this isn't going to fall down. But we don't get any of that. And photography was, uh, we're told, developed in 1827. But we have buildings from the 1830s to 1900, like you said, these amazing buildings that were built, at, you know, and these were the, the, you know, the cornerstone buildings of, of, you know, apparently these new cities, all the big government buildings. We don't find any, any construction photos, nothing. Like all we can find is the completed buildings with a bit of scaffolding around them. And that's all we get. Yeah, I, so I pointed, what, out, I pointed hmm. on this show several times. I have a book of photographs from San Francisco of the 1850s. I've shown them to you guys, and they're panoramas. And you go through with a magnifying glass. For hours I spent, and I couldn't find one building being built out of hundreds. Hmm. And, and these are new, you know, it's like, you know, America is like Australia. You know, we were sort of, you know, founded found <laughs> um so, so the story is all this building went on and, and all these cities were constructed in a very short time but yeah no photos no models um e even even the architects when you look up you know for the architects <laughs> you'll find a name and then you look into it and they they just give this architect like 20 buildings they say oh yeah he built 20 buildings in 10 years and it's like oh okay and then you talk to an architect today and you say, oh, how long would it take to build that capital building? And they're like, oh, three or four years to, to get the design work done. You know, before we even think of, of, of flattening the land, you know, it's years. Yep. Uh, and, and there's a massive building in Australia that was for a world ex exhibition, eight months, B built in eight months. And this thing is huge. And this was in the, uh, you know, last century when Australia was, was a, you know, they tell us just a little, you know, basically still a colony. Was, we weren't, it didn't even have foundation back then. We weren't a country, uh, but they were whacking up these huge buildings in eight months. And so there's so many problems with the story they give us. Yeah. Uh, this picture here, this is Paris. This is actually called the whole of Paris. And this was in the seventies where they did a massive excavation job uh, you know, a lot of rebuilding. And again, look what they found underground. And look, this is sitting on, on pillars. 
Wait a minute, you're saying that's underneath that building, those, those buildings? Yep. yep, so this is the, the ground level. Are we talking all these like buildings. 100 feet? That's, well, look how big these built. This look at that, that's a big truck. Okay, that's so a crane. 50 feet. Yeah, so, so how, you know, how tall is this story? Look at that, that that's a fairly large story. And this but is no the other one, thing about the, no the size of the story. Like is, that. You, that would, that's not really a very safe way to build. Well, well, exactly. I mean, but we also don't know what's underneath this. That's true. This may not be the bottom. Right. This may just be, um, you know, to look with this just maybe, you know, adornment. Because you can yeah. see there's a wall behind here. So, <laughs> and this is what we get um, all over the place. So, um, you know, it's like we say, you know, you, we're walking on history. History's under your feet. <laughs> That's where it is. Right. I'm going to be right back because you just reminded me of something. I want to show you. Yep. All right. So this is the book, Mystery of the Cathedrals by Fulcanelli. And the front piece, artwork, you have to look at it carefully, is the Sphinx in the background, see it? And it's sitting on a building. Ah. Oh. The Sphinx is sitting on a building. There you go. This is the thing. Uh, and when you start looking into old, old books and old pictures, you know, from sort of 15, 1600s, you, you find some very strange things like that. And, and how were they doing this? How were they, you know, designing all, and, and statues? How were they making these statues carved of marble, marble of material where if you make the wrong hit, you can literally crack it in half and have to throw the whole thing away. Yet we have thousands with just perfect faces. Lifelike, lifelike perfect. They can't, yeah, they can't do it today. No, no, they can't. You can, no, there's no um, Michelangelo around today. Yeah, it's like with a lot of these buildings, they can't repair them. Like literally, when, when they break, they, there's no one who has the skill to repair them. That's why I'm um, going to tore them down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that and, and to hide the past. Right. Um, you know, it's like you said with the timelines, they just, they mess it up so much. Um, yeah, just, just, just so that we can't piece it together in a sequential thing. They, they just throw it all around and say, oh, this came in here and this came in here. But um, the story well, we're given is just Yeah, so they're wrong. always moving us around. They're using fire and, and yep. like uh, <laughs> the fake gold rush and, and all yep. of that. And they just keep moving us around through. They're doing it right now. We're going through one of them right now. They're, yep. you know, they're not moving us around yet. But soon, people are going to have foreclosures and things going on, and then there's going to be some moving. Mm. Yeah, they're definitely, I mean, and it's happening, like you said, uh, people are doing it by themselves at the moment, especially yeah. in your country. You know, a lot of people are fleeing certain states and going to other states, and that's, you know, that, that's been, um, that's part of their plan. Yep. You know, this is how they do it. They, they, they do things, they don't tell us, hey, move there. They just make it so that, we have to move there, you know? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what's going mm. on. Let's the, the, control the narrative. Fire to the California fires are all about moving people around. Yeah, they are. Um, and we had the same thing with fires in Australia and, and yep. exactly the same as California. When you look into where the fires were, you can then go and find maps for um, high speed rails that they want to put in those exact areas. Yep. Uh, you know, so it's, um, yeah, it's very interesting times. But, um... Hey, everybody. Jay Widener, Reality Check. Thanks for watching. That was Campbell with the Autodidactic channel. And definitely check that out on YouTube. I'm Jay Widener, and thanks for watching.